All right, so let's say you have uh, this file and you know perhaps you were just writing some content or textbook and you really want to get the perspective of your students. Well, you could go to share and then change it so uh, that other people can view or other people can comment or edit. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel this. Um, and then you would have to know which URL to embed. Um, and, and that's the only way to do it so it's dynamically embedded in, in another website or in Blackboard or Moodle. The alternative is you can publish it, but the downside to publishing it is that it's a static document and no one can, can add to it. So to uh, enhance the workflow of sharing and then getting the URL and embedding it. And remember when you embed it, you still have to worry about formatting. Is it gonna be centered in the page? Is it gonna be, um, what's the width and the height? So what I've done is created this add-on called Embedify and you just say what you want the, the permissions to be, comment, edit, or view. And I, th I find comment is the best because then you can get the perspective of your students and you can really identify the, the pain points um, by the hotspots of the comments. You could choose edit if you wanna give them uh, uh, more access or you could just let them view. Uh, but I, I think comment is really good for getting uh, the interaction from your students and from getting the, the most feedback. And then you can say if you want it centered, left or right, I find center is the best. Now, if you're doing comments, I would recommend having a thousand width. If you're just embedding it in a document so that people can view it uh, or, or edit it, then 800 is good. But because there's kind of some margins, um, the the width is better if you're doing comments to be a thousand. This is also true because uh, by default, I think the table of contents will appear on the left of the, the table navigation, the uh, document navigation uh, if, if you're using styles. So then you just get the embed code and then you hit the button to copy it. So I've copied this code and it's nothing big. I mean, if you know uh, minor, minor HTML, you can probably recreate that yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm in Blackboard. And again, this could be Moodle or Angel or whatever LMS or, or a website. And I'm just going to build a blank page and I'm gonna give it a title. I'll just call it Java for now because the, the, the file that I'm actually embedding is Java method. So actually maybe I'll add the word methods there. And then in HTML, I'm just going to paste. So I've pasted all the code that I copied and I do update. Now on Blackboard, it happens to be a big yellow chunk, uh, but sometimes depending on your LMS or your CMS, you'll be able to see the actual rendering of it. And I hit submit. And now what I'm going to do is head over to the student perspective. So this is a student perspective and I'm incognito here. And the only thing I'm logged into is Blackboard as a student. So I don't see the perspective of the faculty that I would here. And I'm also logged into Google as my faculty member in this window, but in this window, I'm not logged into Google anywhere. So if I click on this document, I'll actually see as a student, this document is embedded. Uh, and as a student, uh, you know, I can close that outline view there just to reclaim some space. So as a student, I can make some comments. Uh, and so I can do that right in line. This is actually just making a suggestion to the author of the document, or I could actually add a comment if I wanted. Now, if I head over to the teacher view, and I go to the main document, I can actually hover over this and say, you know what, I reject this or I accept this um, particular change. I forgot to submit that particular comment. So any comment that's done in line, does, that will automatically render. Um, but if you are doing an actual comment, then whatever you type, you also have to hit comment to submit that. So I'll come back over to the teacher perspective and you can see anything that's added in line, I can accept or reject. Anything that's a regular comment, I can uh, treat it just as a comment. So you can either resolve a comment or delete the comment. So I'm just gonna call that resolved um, and I'm going to reject all these suggestions. So it's really up to the student uh, or the faculty rather to instruct the students and you just have to do this once a semester and just say, hey, you know, you know, I've written some content and I want you to kind of go through it. Maybe my code's wrong, maybe you don't understand something. Um, so just go ahead and click in there 
and type whatever you want. And, you know, at the end of the day or the end of the week, I'll go back and I'll look on my copy. I'll look on my copy and and I'll be able to kind of see, you know, where all the students are struggling. And, you know, a lot of times you, you all have some really good ideas. So I'll incorporate those into the document. Um, and that's really the message you want to get out to your students is how to how you want them to be uh, modifying this document. And again, nothing they do to this document will be permanent uh, because they don't have access to actually change the document. They can just comment. And again, you can comment by doing it the old school way of highlighting something and hitting uh, the add comment button or the new way, which I think is a lot better, uh, is just to type right in line and then everyone will see that. So I'm going to go ahead and reject that change. I'm going to mark that one as resolved. So that my document has been unaffected. So again, to do that, all you have to do is go to add-ons and embedify. You can embedify that particular uh, document. So you have to do this in each document is copy and paste that code. Uh, the only other thing that I would tell you is that um, if you ever want to undo this, you can just go to the share button up at the top and you can turn it off. Now, the problem with turning it off, of course, is if I go back over to my student view in Blackboard and I refresh that particular page, now they're not going to be able to get into it. So once this renders, there's there's just nothing there because that, that document won't render. So that's how you use Embedify. Uh, and on this website, you'll find lots of different tools and tips to help you out. Uh, uh, you leverage your Google Docs and, and your Google Apps and some other non-Google products as well into your courses. So this is Embedded.Education and this particular tool is Embedify.